Wookie Hole Cave is a solutional cave, that is, formed by a process of weathering in which the natural acid in groundwater and perhaps acid producing bacteria, snot tights as they are called, as they hang from the ceiling like, well, snot, dissolves the rocks and forms the cave. The temperature in the cave is a constant 11 degrees centigrade, that's 52 degrees for those who use Fahrenheit. The cave has been used by humans for around 45,000 years and this is demonstrated by the discovery of tools from the Paleolithic period along with fossilised animal remains. Evidence of occupation lasts from the Stone Age through to the Roman period. Since the 1930s divers have explored the extensive network of chambers although the full extent of the cave system is still unknown with approximately 4,000 metres including 25 chambers having been explored so far. The cave is noted for the Witch of Wookie Hole, a roughly human shaped stalagmite that legend says is a witch turned to stone by a monk from Glastonbury. I think I'll stick with the weathering process on this one. A thousand year old skeleton of a woman was discovered in the caves by Bulk in 1912 and this has also been traditionally linked to the legendary witch. The remains have been part of the collection of the Wells and Mendip Museum which was founded by Bulk following excavation. It was largely the legend of the witch that prompted TV's most haunted to film in Wookiee Hole, the caves and the mill downstream. Apart from the legend of the witch, and discounting anything that reality paranormal TV shows manufacture for effect, there is one interesting documented encounter in the cave which occurred during the filming of Doctor Who, The Revenge of the Cybermen, 1975. An account of this is included in Doctor Who the Handbook of the Fourth Doctor, which was played of course by Tom Baker. In November 1974, Michael E. Bryant, the director of Revenge of the Cybermen, was in Wookiee Hall assessing the viability of the location for an upcoming Doctor Who episode. Bryant told Doctor Who magazine of an interesting story on one of his visits when he went to check the location site. He says, I wanted to spend about a day in the caves where we were going to film, but the authorities weren't keen on me being down there while they were showing guided tours around. They asked if I would mind going down after closing time, which was about 7 o'clock. I said fine, but pointed out that I'd have to be there until midnight at least. They agreed, saying that they'd lock both entrances as normal, giving me a key. With my wife, I duly set off into the caverns, and after about two hours of wandering about, taking notes, somebody came up. I thought at first he was a security guy, but then I saw he was dressed in a wetsuit. I asked him how he had got in, and he said, Oh, I always come in. Can I borrow your torch? I refused because I needed it to see with, and the man said, Right you are, before going off into the gloom. Shortly afterwards we heard a little Irish tune whistling from the shadows, and both my wife and I began to feel a little scared. I decided to call it a night, even though I hadn't finished. But first, I asked the caretaker who the man had been and why he had been let in. I was told, we don't let anyone in. He was an Irishman who died down there for potholing three years ago. Of course, I couldn't tell anyone because my film unit would never have worked there. But that wasn't the end of the experiences at Wookiee Hole for the Doctor Who film crew. The location filming at Wookiee Hole was plagued by a series of problems which the crew blamed on a curse. This was apparently brought about when the production staff used the stalagmite called the witch as a prop and despite warnings they proceeded to put a witch's hat and cloak on it. The assistant floor manager suffered a severe attack of claustrophobia. Another crew member fell ill and an electrician suffered a broken leg when a ladder collapsed. During the scene where the character Sarah Jane Smith rides one of the water skimmers the boat went wild and Liz Sladen was forced to jump off treading water despite heavy boots until her rescue by Terry Walsh, the program's long-running stuntman. Both required precautionary vaccinations at a local hospital, but were otherwise unhurt. The boat disappeared and was never seen again. Now I too have a personal account from Wookie Hole, as I visited there on a motorcycle tour of the West Country in 1984 or 85. We were taken by a guide down the level path through the accessible part of the cave and across the bridge that crossed the cavern that was carved out by an underground whirlpool, stopping occasionally to hear his speech on the place. 
I varied position in the small group, sometimes at the front, sometimes lagging behind, just marvelling at the cave. Right from the start of the tour, I was aware that we were not alone. Someone, a male energy, was following us. And indeed, on a couple of occasions, when I was at the rear of the group, when we stopped for the tour guide to give his speeches, there was the sound of a couple of footsteps behind us. These then stopped, and would start again as we moved off. And no, it wasn't an echo. I experimented with that by slapping my foot down hard a couple of times, but not receiving the corresponding sound. I lagged behind a little at one stop point and noticed that the footsteps didn't start again until I moved off. They were keeping a little behind the group all the way, just following us, doing no harm. In fact, I doubt that many would have been aware of the presence. He felt interested in us, but lonely. At times, the presence was more noticeable. For instance, when we got to the cavern and the walkway bridge across it, the feeling of the presence intensified greatly, but the presence diminished after this and was gone once we were on our way out of the cave. Wookie Hole is a superb place for a tour if you're in the area.